Hello, Scott here, back with another guitar lesson. It's been five or six weeks since my last lesson on YouTube. Um, in the meantime, I've been putting uh, my website together, which uh, you can go check out at scottwilliamsguitar.com. I'm doing all the, uh, the website myself, so it's uh, uh, fairly basic, but I think it looks uh, uh, clean, it's acceptable. So uh, drop by there, and uh, the, the plan in the short term is to make the, uh, the blog there a forum for discussing all guitar-related topics. So uh, uh, stop by, check it out, let me know what you think. In the uh, uh, previous lessons, we had been talking about uh, approaching keyboard-based um, keyboard tunes on the guitar and, and uh, um, focusing on copying the keyboard parts more or less note for note. And today, I want to talk about a scenario where copying a keyboard part doesn't really fill up the space in the scenario you're working on. Um, I play in an acoustic guitar duo with my friend John, and he uh, started bugging me, dude, I really want to do Sunglasses at Night in our duo. And I, I listened to Sunglasses at Night, and uh, I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, uh, it has this really distinctive keyboard part that has this... Uh, You know, that, that kind of a thing. And I listened to that and thought, that's awfully sparse. How is, uh, how is that going to work, um, filling up that space? And as uh, um, a week went by, I was uh, listening to uh, further into the song, and there's the uh, underlying harmonic progression that started to give me some ideas. So in the song, the initial chord is an A minor. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the second chord is this uh, cool inversion of uh, D7. Then an F. Then the F has a G in the bass. And back to A minor. So even though you don't hear all that in the song, it's implied by the keyboard riff and the bass line. And um, tinkering around with the chords, I realized that I could arpeggiate those chords while keeping the essence of this idea. So what I came up with, timing that out, is... And, uh, and I'll show you how to play that part. The, uh, the first chord is A minor, and what I'm doing, breaking that up, is using the thumb to play the fifth string, and then the D string. I've got an E with my second finger. The middle finger will catch the second string, and index finger will catch the third string. Then, my first finger lifts up, and I'll repeat the second and third string. So, so far, thumb, thumb, middle, index, middle, index. And where I place those notes in the, in the arpeggio figure keeps that... And then I'll repeat that idea twice, so A minor twice. Second chord is going to have these notes C on the first fret of second string, second finger on the second fret of the third string, and fourth finger on this F sharp 
on the D string, 4th fret. And this is actually a, a, a D7 chord in inversion. And with the, uh, uh, the picking pattern, it's going to stay exactly the same. Thumb, thumb, middle, index, middle, index. And lifting off first finger at the same point in the arpeggio. Next chord, slide fourth finger back to F natural and fret three of the D string. Same arpeggio. And we'll just do that once. And then with the third finger, we'll grab this low G. And again, thumb, thumb, skipping the A string. And back to A minor. Recording the first segment a minute ago, I uh, realized I forgot to mention sunglasses at night. The recording is in B flat minor, so to sound in the same key as the recording, you'd capo up at first fret, and uh, um, th then it'll sound like the recording. Uh, that said, I, I also wanted to talk about an interesting uh, um, lead guitar concept based on these chords. Most of the chords in the progression. The, uh, the A minor, the F, the F with the G in the bass, all sound in the key of E, uh, the key of A minor, no sharps, no flats. So you can uh, uh, cover that with your uh, uh, basic pentatonic scale, the uh, uh, A, C, D, E, G type of a sound. In, uh, in fifth position, fifth fret, eighth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. 5th fret, 7th fret, 5th fret, 7th fret, 5, 8, 5, 8. The, uh, the one chord that that doesn't exactly cover is the second chord, the, the D7, where we get the, uh, the chord that is the, uh, the F sharp in it. So when you're playing uh, um, the A minor pentatonic scale, that scale doesn't quite account for that chord. But a, uh, uh, the good news is a very simple modification will uh, uh, get you through there and you'll sound like you're playing right through the changes. What we're going to do is take all the G's in that A minor pentatonic scale and replace them with F sharps, which is that interesting note out of the, uh, the D7 chord. So going through that uh, pentatonic scale again, A, C, D, sharp, A, and then the second octave, C, D, E, there's that F sharp again, A, C. Or, or in other words, taking that uh, minor pentatonic scale, lowering that note to there, and lowering this G to this F sharp then we're going to get a, a, um, a modified pentatonic scale that will fit nicely over the D7. So the trick is, as the chords are going by, you can switch up scales. I've played that uh, riff we worked on earlier, the arpeggio pattern, into my loop station so we can check this out. Minor pentatonic in A. There's that F sharp. the second chord, I'm switching into that second scale. And then back. Minor. Is that F sharp? Just kind of a cool 
sound to play through the changes. Once you get that, that sound under your fingers in the, the fifth position, you can explore that idea in, in other positions where you start with your minor pentatonic scale and shift those uh, uh, G's down to F sharps and you'll have a nice alternate uh, modified pentatonic scale that'll cover that D7 chord. So have fun exploring that. All right, well, I hope you're enjoying the videos. Now that my basic website is up and running, scottwilliamsguitar.com, um, I, I am going to get back on a regular schedule of uh, posting a, a, a free lesson on a weekly basis, or try to post on a weekly basis. You know how schedules can get sometimes. But uh, I appreciate all the, uh, the comments and positive feedback. All that's been very encouraging. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and practice, practice. I'll see you in a week or so.